Hear you, Graham. Amen. 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 There is a word from the Lord this morning. This morning we're coming from the book of 2 Kings, the 20th chapter, verse 1 through 6. Can you turn with me this morning? 2 Kings, chapter 20. Verses 1 through 6. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads, In those days, somebody say in those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order. Because you are going to die, you will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. He said, Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly before Isaiah had left the middle of the court. Somebody said before he left. The middle of the court, the word of the Lord came to him and said, go back. Go back and tell the ruler of of my people, this is what the Lord, the God, of your father David says, he said, I have heard your prayers and seen your tears. I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life and I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my sake. And for the sake of my servant, David. Amen. Amen. As you take your seat. As you take your seats today. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it will not return to us void. But it will accomplish everything that it set out to do. Father, I thank you for allowing me to move according to your Holy Spirit this morning. Father, remove every deaf ear. Touch the stony heart. And speak through these lips of clay this morning with power, clarity, and understanding. I lower Sabrina right now. God, and I'm asking that you send fresh manna to feed your people today. Speak in this house, God, in the name of Jesus, we do pray. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And let every man and woman, boy and girl in here say amen. Amen, 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 amen. Um, I'm going to give you all my, my text this morning, amen. If, we had to, if I had to have a subject this morning, if I had to have a subject this morning, it would be, I, I've got to make a move. I've got to make a move. Somebody turn to your labor on and say, I've got to make a move. I've got to make a move. I've got to make a move. Amen. I've got to make a move. And then so on this uh, Survivor Sunday, the power of our text places emphasis in an area where I believe that uh, not just the body of believers is often found struggling, but in a place that the creation of God uh, grapples with. And that's with our response uh, to the permissive will of God. 
when it comes to the fact that God will allow suffering and he will allow pain and he will allow afflictions and sudden sicknesses and sudden death. Amen. Amen. And so for us, the idea of God suddenly or his divine interruptions, uh, they can produce a span of emotions that could be quite dichotomous. That means that means total opposite because on the one hand, the moment when God breaks into time and space and, and intervenes on your behalf and he grabs you and snatches you out of the snare of the enemy and hardship, uh, those are moments of triumph. So suddenly produce uh, triumphs and joy. Come on, some of you all. Some of you all know what I'm talking about here today. Amen. Some of you all are a witness of that moment when God suddenly saved your life. Amen. Amen. Somebody remembers when there was one prognosis that said this and then God said that. I must not have any witnesses in this place. Somebody remembers uh, the situation, amen, that God totally interrupted it. Amen. Amen. We should give God the praise in here for the suddenness that bring triumph. Amen. Amen. But then there are, on the other hand, on the other hand, there are other suddenness. Amen. When God's divine interruptions uh, permit or allow tragedies or, or deaths. Amen. Amen. Yes, these suddenlies can be uh, hard to swallow. And oftentimes it can be uncomfortable. Amen. To the mind, the body, and the spirit to bear. So yes, God's suddenlies can produce a span of emotions that are totally opposite Amen. And though we don't like to be uncomfortable, and we are all grateful for the miracles, the signs, and the wonders that follow uh, the believers, the reality is God injects our lives with intentional mystery. Amen. To foster our dependency on him. And so sometimes he uses a difficult, amen, and crushing and uncomfortable experiences, amen, to prepare us for what's next, amen. Do I have anybody in here who's ever been through something that crushed you, broke your heart, amen, suddenly, amen, but we should not be confused into thinking that God is oftentimes when he comes in with a suddenly that is a triumph, amen. We should not be uh, confused that he comes in um, and ch changes his mind. No, 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 no. I believe that the fullness of time that has to align with what's going on has to catch up. Amen. As a matter of fact, I heard my bishop say God knew what he was going to do. Hallelujah, you ought to bless the name of the Lord in here because God knew what he was going to do. But Psalms 34 and 19 said that many are the afflictions of the righteous. And God's promise to us is that he was going to deliver us from them all. So today we're here, we, we are recognizing our living survivors and we're wearing our pink in honor of our survivors that survived on this side and those in rest. But the psalmist said that time is filled with swift transitions. Hallelujah, none of earth unmoved can stand. And then he gave us a task. He said, build your hope on things eternal. He said, hold to God's unchanging hand. Somebody say, I've got to make a move. I've got to make a move. I've got to make a move. Uh, but we struggle here. Amen. We struggle uh, with this. And it's because... Uh, the people of God are caught hanging our hats on something that's more comfortable to this flesh than faith. And that is control. Oh my God, you all, you're not going to talk to me this morning. You know you like to be in control of your life. You know you like to control your finances. Uh, you've already wrote out your 10 steps to success. Amen. You've done all of these things. Amen. But the the, the matter is, 
Amen. That God is in control. Amen. Amen. And then we, we walk through this life and we say that, oh, I'm living by faith and not by sight. And, and, and we say, God, you can just go ahead and have your way. But what we find when affliction comes to your house... When we find when something unforeseen comes to your house, that that statement actually came with caveats. It came with disclaimers. Amen. It came with a however come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But unlike us, the king in this story, the life dis depicted in this passage from this Bible, amen, was a king by the name of Hezekiah. And Hezekiah had a close relationship with God so much as he moved how God directed him. Now, one of the fallacies of man is that because we have authority, we walk in dominion, amen, because we got the devil under our feet, we expect our will to supersede God's. Come on, I need, I need you to stay with me today because I'm trying to set this thing up and take you somewhere. You see, we'll amplify our capabilities, amen, and we'll amplify our gifts, and we'll promote our plans, and we'll promote our strategies, and then we'll navigate and we'll move around in areas that were never part of our purpose, and then we'll invalidate the sovereignty of God. Amen. And then we'll get mad at God. We'll get angry with God when he disrupts our plans. Come on, somebody. You don't have to talk to me today. My pastor already turned me loose. Amen. We want the oil of God. We want the power of God. And we want to be trusted with the things of God. But we don't want to move through the processing. We don't want to go through the pressing. We don't want to go through what it takes to develop us to handle these things. Because you cannot handle God's stuff any kind of way. Amen. Somebody is, is looking for to be in a place that you are not anointed to walk in. I said what I said. I said some people are touching things that you have no business touching. But you better be careful if you want what I want. If you got to be careful, amen, to want to walk in my shoes. Come on and help your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you don't know the cost. You don't know the cost of this oil. You don't know the cost of this oil. And so because the people of God are not understanding the weight of God's processing, amen, the church lacks the spiritual maturity needed to accept when God speaks contrary to our plans. And so we respond in carnality, amen, and we respond in temper tantrums, amen, and outrage, amen, towards a very spiritual and sovereign God that's actually trying to stretch your capacity, amen. Y'all know how it goes. People get mad at God and start spewing all types of foolishness, talking about who God is not, amen, talking about this is a brainwashed religion amen no 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 the devil is a liar god is sovereign and psalms 135 and 6 says but the lord does whatever pleases him in the heaven and on the earth and in the seats and all their depths and through his decisions they may not be comfortable but 2 Corinthians 14 says that our light afflictions, come on, tell somebody they light, they're light and they're but for a moment. But this is where you hang your head at. They are working for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah. So I want to shift the paradigm of your thinking this morning back to Psalms 24 and 1 that said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell with
within. Wow. Amen. And remind you that Isaiah 55 and 1 says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. I'm trying to help somebody in here. My ways are not your ways, saith the Lord. And then Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know. I know the plans I have for you. And those are plans of good. And, and, and pl there were not evil, but plans to take you to an expected end. So that means God's patterns of design for our lives may not match yours. Come on, who am I helping in here today? Proverbs 16. Hallelujah. Says that God, that man plans his course. But the Lord determines his steps. So yes, God can use anything. He can use anything. And sometimes it's the unexpected. And it, sometimes it's the hard stuff. Amen. Sometimes it's the stuff, amen, that takes you out of your character. Sometimes it's the stuff that gets you on your face. Hallelujah. God will do what he needs to do with his own stuff. Amen. Sometimes the process, he's trying to take you from one place and usher you to the next. Amen. Are y'all with me? And even if that means tragedy in your house, hallelujah, or cancer in your body, hallelujah, or brain tumors, hallelujah, or grief, God determines your steps. As a matter of fact, Isaiah said in chapter 6 of Isaiah, it was in the year the king Uzziah died that I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train did fill the temple. Amen. And then Romans 8 and 28 says, for we know that all things are working together for good. For them that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. And then Job spoke from my heart. Job said, for he know the way that I take. And after he hath tried me, I'm coming out as pure gold. Somebody shout. Somebody shout in here, I got to make a move. Amen. So we find King Hezekiah in a hard place. He's in a hard place. Scripture passage this morning. Amen. So it describes him as a king who did what was good and, and right. And he was faithful before the Lord. Amen. And the Bible says that he was more zealous for the Lord than any of his predecessors. And that he took the throne and he set his efforts towards cleaning up the work of his father, King Ahaz's hands. Amen. Amen. Somebody say he understood his assignment. Amen. And if he was going to reign well for 29 years, amen, he had to consult God, amen, in everything that he did. Somebody say that's a good move. That's a good move. Amen. So I've got to give you three ways to move this morning to get you through some hard places. And we're going to find it in two verses. Verse 1, we find Hezekiah in about the 14th year of his reign as king of Judah. And we find that he has become ill and he is receiving a message from the prophet saying, set your house in order because you are going to die and not live. So the Bible says, hearing this, amen, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and cried out to God in prayer. Move number one. Posture yourself towards God. The Bible says that Hezekiah turned towards the wall. And in this season, you are going to have to position yourself that you're not looking at your situations. You're going to have to turn your face towards God in prayer. Amen. Amen. You got to see it, but don't see it. Amen. You got to hear it, but don't hear it. Amen. You got to build your own secret place. Amen. He that dwells in the secret place of the most high should abide under the shadow of the almighty. Somebody say, posture yourself. Amen. Amen. You got to posture yourself until you're looking to the hills. 
from which cometh your help, knowing that all of your help is coming from the Lord. Help me teach this in here today, God. Amen. In those days, Hezekiah became ill. I said, in those days. What does that mean, in those days? I'm glad you asked. The Bible tells us a uh, chapter back in chapter 19, amen, that Judah was under invasion by King Sennacherib, the Assyrian king. Amen. So that means that Hezekiah is experiencing the invasion of the enemy and the weight of a decision from God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody needs to get that today. I said at the same time that God allowed an enemy to invade Judah's territory. Lift up your hands, Judah, in this place. Amen. God sent a message through the prophet to get his house in order. Oh, my God. Somebody still didn't get that, mama. Hallelujah. I'm going to say this again. Hallelujah. Y'all may have to allow me to teach and testify this morning. Hallelujah. In 2019, God allowed the enemy, cancer, to invade my body. And with that notification, at the same time, somebody doesn't say at the same time, comes a notification of death. Hallelujah. I need somebody that survived anything. Hallelujah. You give God glory in this house. Hallelujah. Y'all too quiet for me this morning. Hallelujah. First two says Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he prayed and he wept bitterly and then the bible says hezekiah said these words he said remember how i walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and i have done what is good in your eyes well in 2019 i didn't have a wall but i walked out of the doctor's office and i sat in the parking deck of Emory Hospital, Atlanta. And I closed the door to my car and I began to pray out loud. I said, God, I said, God, what is this? I said, God, I, I feel like all my life I've had to fight and push through in this short period of time. I said, God, I've had to trust you in some very uncomfortable places. Can I testify this morning? I said, God, ever since I was a little girl, I feel like the enemy has been trying to kill me. I said, God, I'm tired of always fighting. So I need you right now. Can I open up my front door and let you in this morning? I said, God, I've always, I haven't always got it right. I said, but I've loved you with all of my heart. As far back as I can remember. As a matter of fact, when I was a little girl, I said, God, you were a constant friend that I can always cry to in secrecy in the midnight hour. Hallelujah, your word has always been a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And even when I went on with my life, God, you had always been a very present help in times of trouble. I said, God, you've always been there to wipe every tear from my eyes. And so, God, I can't remember on June 12 of the year 2000 that you saved my very life, God, and you snatched my child out of the clutches of death. Help me in here today. I need every intercessor right now to go ahead and go in in your language. Come on, I need everybody praying in here because I got to give and tell my business this morning. And ain't nobody mad but the devil. Hallelujah. In 2008, I went through a heartbreak in a divorce that sent me spiraling down through a dark maze of depression. 
depression. I think I got a few witnesses in here that toiled and wrestled with me. Hallelujah. I got so far down, boggled down, hallelujah, in my tears. Hallelujah. I'm trying to help somebody today that I almost did the unthinkable. I didn't even want to live this life. Hallelujah. And so I said, God, you resurrected me. I said, you heal my body. You heal my mind. And then you put me in the path of a very fine man that wanted even to make me his wife. So I said, God, I'm confused right now. I said, I'm taking care of this temple the best way that I know how. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, God, I thought I was in pristine condition. I never had any ailments, not taking all those pills. I said, but this same body, you mean to tell me? Are you going to allow to betray me right now? I said, God, this same body that I take to the gym every morning at 5 o'clock and then I take it back in the evening, it's trying to kill me. I said, I don't know how to feel about that. Hallelujah. I said, God, I don't like it here. Hallelujah. But I want you to know that the more I talk to God, the more I talk my way through sitting in that car, just me and God. And the more that I had, the more I remembered that I had survived every single time. I remember that the Lord snatched me back from the enemy. So the more I talked to God, the more I could feel my strength. Because I could see the manifestation miracle. The man, it, it manifested in my eyes that God had performed miracles, signs, and wonders right in my face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Hezekiah whipped bitterly, but I refused to cry. I said, God, I don't want to think that every way that you made for me in this life and after you've proven yourself over and over again in my life that I would doubt you now. I said, God, I don't know what to do right now but to trust you. I ran back in that gray acre, sitting there in that garage just me and God. There was a war going on in my members. Amen. I, had, I said to myself, get yourself together. We ain't crying this time. The last time the Lord brought me out, I cried until I went into a hole. I said, we ain't crying this time. I said, I refuse to feel right now. Hallelujah. Some stuff you better refuse. Some stuff you got to say ain't gonna happen. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, I don't like it here, but I refuse to doubt that you don't have me in the palm of your hands. I said, God, I don't like it here. But I choose to trust you. And I said, if I die, I already know that I still win. Hallelujah. Because I've already been to the water. And I've already been baptized. My soul has already been converted. And I feel all right. I even heard Esther singing in my ear. I said, God, if I perish while I'm going down this path, let me perish because I know that I'm going, I'm going to see the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to move on through. Hallelujah. Go ahead and write down the 
your second move after you postured yourself so that you're not looking at your situation but you turned your face to God is that you hold fast to your faith you got to hold on hallelujah to every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord concerning you go ahead and tell your neighbor you got to hold on hold on and don't let go hallelujah I said stay right there and don't you move somebody need to cling to the altar in the middle of your situation and don't you move hallelujah some people are going to come in your life that you're going to have to deny access to you can say not this time this time I need all my fortified people this I need somebody that's been where I've been this time. I just want my prayer warriors this time. I don't need the streets talking. I need the kingdom talking. Hallelujah. This time uh, we got to speak the same language. And if you don't trust God, get out of my way. Because we got to go somewhere. I got to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. They're going to make some people mad. But it did not matter anyway. Because the Bible said, no weapon formed against me is going to be able to prosper. Hallelujah. Tell somebody to hold fast to your faith. Hold fast to your faith. My God, today, move number three. You got to stand still and watch God turn it around. Go through it and watch God turn it around. I didn't say hang your head and go into yourself. I said go through it and watch God turn it around. The Bible says that before Isaiah could get to the middle of the court, that God had turned his situation around. He said, go back. Tell the man of God that I heard every prayer and I seen the tears in his eyes. And that not only was that he was going to be healed, but I was going to give him 15 more years. Won't God hasten to every call? Hallelujah. I'm going to go take my seat. But before I go, I believe that God assigned me to this house to tell the people that in this season, the next move is going to be yours. The next move is going to be yours. If you're going to survive this season, Somebody in here has got to make a move. This season, God is looking for a church that shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrows that fly by day. The kingdom of heaven suffer violence, and you got to take it by force. Hallelujah. This season, faithlessness and doubt won't cut it. Not in this season. In this season, hallelujah, the church has to be fortified and built up in your holy faith like never before. The enemy is shooting darts at all of our minds. The enemy is shooting arrows, trying to penetrate your body. You know he came to steal, kill, and destroy Hallelujah. So this season, your heart's posture should be asking one question. Who shall separate me from the love of Jesus? Shall it be tribulation? Shall it be distress? Shall it be persecution? Shall it be sickness? Shall it be the perils by the sword? Tell somebody neither night, neither heights or death, nor principalities or powers shall be able to separate me 
from the love of Jesus. I'm trying to tell somebody that in order to survive this year, you're going to have to check, fill, and the door. Hallelujah. We ain't doing nothing scared, deceiver. But we are intentional in trusting God. Go ahead and say, I've got to make a move. Some of you all been too timid. Some of you been too passive. Why the enemy been messing all around in your stuff. But the Spirit of the Lord is saying, it's your move. This season, you've got to fight back. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, it's your time to make a move. Am I talking to anybody this morning? And I'm helping anybody this morning. I don't know who I'm talking to. Hallelujah. But Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12 and 8 that three times I prayed to the Lord and I asked him to let this thing depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. So my strength can be made perfect in weakness. Come on, you got to open up your mouth and say something. That's your move this season. Open up your mouth and say something. Hallelujah. I need you to say something until you feel your peace coming back. I need you to say something until you feel your joy coming back. I need you to say something until you're released from that burden that you walked in here with this morning. I need somebody to say something until revival comes in this earth. Anybody tired of being defeated? Anybody tired of the enemy messing with your stuff? Anybody tired of the enemy attacking your body? You got to open up your mouth and say something. Hallelujah, say something. Hallelujah, until the gates of hell swing wide open. Come on, y'all ain't talking this morning. You need to say something until you feel the dunamis power. Hallelujah, in the spirit trying to empower you. Hallelujah, so that you can walk in victory this morning. In the name of Jesus, does anybody feel like I feel this morning? This season, I'm taking all my stuff back. This season, I'm chasing the stuff that was chasing me. This season, I'm going all the way. I don't care who I lead this season. I don't care who has something to say. Hallelujah. This season, the, the enemy is attacking marriages. You can't just sit there with your arms folded, looking all dignified, while the enemy tearing down your house brick by brick. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to open up your mouth in here. Say something, because it's your move this season. If you don't move, your child will be swallowed up. Hallelujah in the rising suicide statistics. Hallelujah from children 10 to 17. Hallelujah. If you don't say something, your grandchildren are going to have to suffer through that generational stuff that you still have not come out of. Open up your mouth in this place and say something. Come on, we came to tell Satan's kingdom down today. This season, if you got sickness in your body, God is saying that it's your move. Or you going to stand right there and like Sister Terry said and die. Hallelujah. Are you going to stay right there? Hallelujah. And be consumed in this season. Hallelujah. It's your move. God is waiting on you to make a move. I don't know how people come into the house of the Lord.
Lord. Hallelujah. And don't walk out of here with your healing. It's your move. I don't know how people come in the house. The enemy been messing with your mind all week long. And you don't walk out with some peace. You got to say something. People are grappling on the edge. Wondering which way should I go? Hallelujah, should I trust God or not? My message to you is, God will. Every single time, I said God will. Every single time. But you got to do something. You got to trust him with all of your might. You got to trust the Lord until you see your breakthrough. I said, hold on. That may be your move. Hold on and don't let go. Somebody said you've already prayed. Somebody said I'm waiting on the Lord to come through. Your move is to hold on. Hallelujah. And see the salvation of the Lord. Hold on. Hallelujah. When it feels hard to endure. I said, hold on, hallelujah, 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 it's your move, I said, it's your move, it's your move, what are you going to do about it, hallelujah, hallelujah, you've been wrestling, hallelujah, with your children, what are you going to do about it, it's your move, hallelujah, hallelujah, Today on this Survivor Sunday, hallelujah, I know I got a few witnesses, hallelujah, that can say, hallelujah, and if you hold on to God's hand, hallelujah, you will receive the victory. Where my Victoria is this morning, hallelujah, glory to God. I got to take my seat right now, but I just want to tell everybody that God will every time that's all I got that's all I know God will hallelujah he'll deliver you he'll heal your body hallelujah I said I like to lost my mind but the Lord kept me I said the Lord kept me anybody else that's been on the edge. Hallelujah. I know that depression is real. Hallelujah. I know that suicide is real. Hallelujah. I know that people are saying this weight is too hard to carry. Hallelujah. Come on, I need everybody in this house. Hallelujah. I need everybody in this house. So lift up your hands in this place. Lift up your voice in this place. Don't talk to me, talk to God. Hallelujah, say God. I give it to you right now. God, I turn it over to you right now. God, I trust your word right now. Come on, don't say it if you don't believe it. I'm trying to help get somebody and peep some people through this morning. Hallelujah, it's your move. Don't you fall by the 
wayside of doubt. Hallelujah. You got to tell everybody standing around you. Excuse me. I got to do what I got to do. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now move out your seat and tell at least seven people, God will. Oh, I said, tell them, God will. He will.